welcome Joystick Justice League to episode 9 of Roundtable. I am Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Mori. I'm Blake Tethered. Yes, we have a special guest today, Blake Tethered of, of course, Tethered on Twitch TV. That's T-E-A-T-H-E-R-D at Twitch.tv. You can see him streaming all the time. We've brought him in today as kind of like our guest expert for the theme we want to tackle, Joe, uh, which is trophies, achievement hunting, and reputation. Yep. Which basically started as kind of a thing in the seventh generation, and over the course of a few years and the community getting bigger, it's become a thing now. Uh, so we're going to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of it with our, our special guest, a, a true, true warrior of the Platinum, Mr. Mr. Blake Tethered over here. So so let, let's start off. Blake, tell us about a little, give us a little bit of background into trophies. Let's, let's get back into the history of it before we get into where it's now. Well, in all honesty, I would probably have to say that I started getting achievements or, plat or trophies um, back with the first day the Xbox 360 came out. I bought it the morning of, and uh, that's kind of where it all started. And then in 2009, I ended up switching over to PlayStation and started getting trophies over there And when I ditched my Xbox. So let's let's rewind to the Xbox for a sec. So you, you started your trophy conquest there. What would you say was your first game that you got trophies for? Do you remember? Uh, it was, I would have to say it was Perfect Dark, because I bought that with the system. What did it feel like, getting the, getting that first trophy? Well, I, to be honest, I didn't even know what it was when it first popped up, right? Achievement Unlocked, it's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Joey, you yeah. wanted to say something there? Yeah, for, for me, uh, I think the very first uh, game that I hit a trophy for on, on the PS3, I think was the original Uncharted. Nice. And then, uh, and, and and at the time, and I kind of looked into it, and I discovered that it, it's it's like a cool kind of a way to kind of compare yourself against other gamers when it comes to achievements. And it, it, and uh, depending on, on how many of these you do and how many you get, you uh, you know you can have bragging rights over uh, your other fellow players. Yeah, you know, it really takes like because we always kind of had bragging rights in the forms of leaderboards uh, yep. back in the day, but really leaderboards don't lend themselves to every type of gaming genre, which is what's happened over the last couple generations. Where I mean, you can you put a leaderboard on a game like Uncharted? No. So how how do you express your ownership of that experience? You give a trophy for for a certain type of thing you do within the game, whether it's 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 mundane and it's like a common trophy, or if it's something that you had to really show off your skill or or your patience, which we're gonna kind of get into when we talk about maybe some of the tethered's uh, exploits and what he's kind of chasing right now on Twitch. For myself, my first trophy came from Super Stardust HD, which I think was actually the first game to get patched for trophies on the PS3, if I can remember. Um, Kind of like what you said, Blake. It was really just kind of mystifying. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. And then uh, something popped up, and and then when I actually went and read the other achievements I hadn't gotten yet, I'm like, it, it snapped immediately. I'm like, oh man, you really have to grind at this game to 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 really hit this. But you know, that's the thing. Once you once you found out you could start comparing it to your friends, it, it kind of becomes a little competitive. It it does, and when you when you reach. Uh... Well, uh, as Tether has uh, on, on several of these games, you reach uh, what's called that Platinum Trophy level. And what that basically is, is that, that, that that's an achievement for somebody that's gone and done basically everything that you could possibly do in a game. And that, that, that's that's basically saying, you know, I've completed this game 100%. So Tether, I think there, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, say, sorry, I was going to say, I think there's a huge difference now, too, with, between beating a game and Platinuming a game. Yes. Big, so, huge difference. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Tether, what was the first game you actually platinumed? Uh, first game I platinumed was I actually went an easy route back in 09 with uh, Ratchet and Clank Crack in Time. Nice. nice. But nice. And, and that was just um, I really I've always enjoyed the Ratchet and Clank games. I think they're great, mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't that tough of a game to platinum. You know, it was the routine: beat the game, beat the game on hard, get all the collectibles, you're finished. There wasn't you know, like a trick or anything to that one. I think that took probably about um, eh, maybe 18, 20 hours. Not too long. Pretty easy platinum. So, what, what was your first really? I would say, what was your what was your first really toughest game that you played, and like one that you really had to grind at, and was your first really kind of tough one to master? No questions about it. Uh, Demon Souls. Absolutely. Demon Souls. It, it was um, the game that actually got me to buy a PS3. I remember reading the review and being like, "Wow, like." This isn't on Xbox, and this game just looks awesome. I, I, I think I went out the next day 
and bought a PS3 after reading the review. And not only, and, and not only did, did it look awesome, it, it was your, it was just a, it was a hardcore, like really had to grind it out kind of third person RPG kind yep. of game. You, you really had to invest some time in that to, and to, to reach the platinum level that you reached, that's, that's really impressive in my opinion. I, I don't think people had quite seen a RPG of that nature on no. a console until that game came out. Like just the sheer difficulty uh, and that, but that's why it got good reviews people loved it the reviewers loved it they liked it that um, there was no hand holding there was no uh, very little in-game guides you know like the game just kind of threw things at you and they were like deal with it and uh, I think that's what I really loved about it it was a truly difficult experience and it's what made it a really good game and it's what has made the uh, the sequels really good games no the sequels but the whole explosion around it guys I mean really look at all the knockoffs not knockoffs but games in that vein that are inspired by like and it's funny they always credit Dark Souls but really Demon Souls was the one that started it it's just the fact that Dark Souls was on 360 and it had a wider audience base when it when it kind of hit but regardless look at all these other games now that like bound by flame which is which is more like a narrative driven Dark Souls and you've got uh, Capcom's Deep Down coming out for the PS4. Then you've got Rogue Legacy, which is like a side-scrolling Demon Souls. And then, and then again, you've got games like Hyperlight Drifter, which doesn't hold your hand, just you beat the shit out of it and it's hard and, and the enemies change their patterns. And, and, and that's what I, I got from you, Tethered, when we, when we talk about your experience, especially with Dark Souls 2, about just how crazy this, this journey is. And I also I want to make a note of Demon Souls, you look back, this is a game that came out in 2009, and even games that have been coming out this year and last year, like, Demon's Souls just looks gorgeous. Like, it, it, it looks like the kind of game that it could have came out this January, and it still would have held up graphic-wise. Like, it was a beautiful game for its time. Yeah. And this is going back, what, five years ago? Oh, absolutely. That's true. Yeah. It, it, it definitely holds up. And, and just the fact that it's a game that, that, that like you said, Tether doesn't hold your hand and kind of you know, kind of point out where you need to go. And I think a lot of uh, games since then have kind of taken a cue from that and, and kind of made it a little bit, and, and, you know, it, what that does in a game too is it really encourages you to, to explore. Right? Whereas if you've, you know, what was a good example, I think of this was uh, Fallout 3. Because uh, when, when I originally played this game, I concentrated mainly on, on the story, you know, that there was this big world to, to explore, but, but I, I fell into the trap of following the story a little too closely. And when it resulting was that I ended the game way too early and I, I couldn't go back and do that. So then that resulted in my next playthrough to actually go in and explore more so that I can enjoy more of that game. Games like Fallout, they demand exploration. Like It's mm -hmm. almost like the, the whole thing they base around the game when they make it. They, they want the people to, to sit down. They don't want you to just go through the main story. They want you to sit there. They want you to explore the town, talk to everybody, you know, see what's going on, do the side quests. Uh, Fallout's a really good example of that too. Great Absolutely. game. Now, but does okay? So there, there are certain situations though. Like you mentioned, Joe, like you finished the game too fast, you forgot to do some stuff. Does Fallout, like, did you platinum Fallout there, tethered? Yeah. Okay. So did it punish you for like, say, doing a story event too fast, and there all of a sudden there was a trophy you couldn't do, you had to play it again? The thing with Fallout Three, if you were to platinum it, is there were certain rules you had to follow. You would almost have to read a guide if you didn't know what you're getting into because. Um, certain side quests wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to trigger them if you went uh, places in the game too early. Uh, if you killed certain people, there were certain side quests you wouldn't be able to do later on. And most importantly, uh, the bobblehead uh, collection. I believe Fallout 3 had three bobbleheads that uh, you had a one-time chance to collect. And if you didn't get them that one time, you couldn't go back uh, later in the game and get them again. Yeah, to so start a new a game. Problem. Yeah. No, the, uh, the this leads into what, what I want to touch uh, on. I want to ask you, uh, Tethered, uh, to uh, to say to uh, to gamers now that are going to want to go out and uh, tackle on these trophies and possibly apply them to these games. How how does a player going at, go about knowing what trophies they need to achieve to get to that level? Well, personally, I I'm a huge fan of uh, PS3Trophies.org. Uh, I think their community is just superb. And uh, one of the main reasons for that is on the forums, usually within the first day or two, um, one of the big trophy collectors who sat there, maybe even platinum the game a couple days early before it came out, they'll do a guide. And the way they lay these guides out is they'll say, here's how many playthroughs the game requires. Um, 
here are all the missable trophies, they lay it all out for you. So if you, your objective is to platinum that game and not have to go back maybe two or three playthroughs that aren't really necessary, they make it easy for you. And the fact they lay out the missable trophies, like when I, when I go to platinum a game and uh, I know there's a guide for it, it's the first thing I go to. I go to ps3trophies.org, I hit their forums, and uh, their forums have a, a little subsection for each game, and in the subsection at the very top of the page, they'll have a sticky post, and it'll be the, the guide. So, so, that, uh, so that's cool. So, so like, there's like, like an actual community around this trophy hunting. Yeah, huge community, huge. I've, I've met some really, really cool people. Uh, I have a lot of people on my friends list from that forum. Uh, I, I definitely am kind of a lot, like I would say even more nowadays, I'm getting a lot more hardcore into the trophies. I have people that just, on my list, that dwarf my trophy collection. <laughs> like I have about 35 Platinums right now. I have a guy on my list, I think, who last time I checked had 180, something wow. like that. Which, that's, that's just insane. That is. Yeah. So, okay, like let's talk about your one of your more recent conquests, Dark Souls 2. I mean, we're talking a lot of hours here. And I've seen you grind away, like you don't really switch games very often. I mean, you might hit something else for a breather, but you've been going at this pretty hardcore. Like you, like what, what goes into dedicating yourself to something like that? Like how do you, how do you, what, what, what's the carrot that keeps you going? Well, my main tactic when, if you're planning a game, especially like Dark Souls is, you can't, you can't give it a break. You can't stop for a couple weeks and come back because you're just not going to be as good as you were when you were playing it every day, you know? So I'm just, I'm trying to stay on it. Uh, that one especially though, like that's a doozy. I My save game right now I think is about 100 and 118 hours on my main character. Oh. I'm getting close to it though. I uh, I thought it was going to take me longer. I think I might be able to platinum it maybe in another 20 or 30. But like I said, like that's another one too where I, I hit the forum for it, or I hit the forums for it and um, there's a couple really irritating trophies that if you <laughs> didn't know exactly where to go and who to talk to, yeah. you, you could have easily have played the game for two, three hundred hours before platinuming it. So it's a, kind of a matter of you know you get on that roll and just kind of yeah. keep it keeping that momentum going, right? So it's like Mike said, like he, he sees me maybe jump from uh, Dark Souls to another game. Like last, I think last night even I, I Dark Souls was just irritating me so much. I switched over to. Uh, XCOM enemy unknown for a little bit, nice. just to you know give give myself a little breather. But uh, that's a that, that's, that's a really that has a rough trophy list that XCOM yeah. man. That yeah, it does, and it's actually been an ongoing project of mine for a few months now because it's I believe it's in the top ten hardest platinums on the PS3, and I believe it. I was trying to do a impossible playthrough last night, and it's just insane. It's very unforgiving. It's, it's Dark Souls Unforgiving, in fact, and uh, the problem with that one, too, is, especially early on, you're really relying on chance for that game, with all the hit chances and stuff, when you know, you're peeking oh, yeah. around a corner, it gives you that 25% chance to hit a guy. Yep. So, like, it doesn't even really matter too much on skill, especially early on in the game. Early on in the game, it's just, you gotta get lucky on a few missions to get a good foothold in the game. See, maybe, no, yeah. One, 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 one game uh, that you played until that I want to specifically ask you about, and, and then this brings up a moment when uh, Mike and I were playing Hotline Miami on Rage Quitters, and there was a moment where we were both getting our asses handed to us, and, and I said, I brought up the fact that you that you t that you uh, had platinum this game, and we're basically doing each area in one combo. Now, get into that. Uh, I, I want to ask you about that and then how you actually pulled that off because I mean that, that that's a game in particular that uh, I'd like to apply them and I, I just want to pick your brain a little bit and find out what your process was for that game in particular. That one took a lot of practice. Uh, didn't really need a trophy guide or anything for it. It was more or less just sit there and get good at it. And uh, like you just said, I, I was doing almost every room in one combo, but you it's had sick. to do that because, yeah, you had to do that because uh, one of the trophies was A plus every mission. And a bunch of those missions, like if you're not getting a really high combo, you're not going to get an A plus. You know, you're going to get a B plus, maybe an A minus. And, and there was, I think that there was one uh, trophy in particular that you had to. Kill what was it? I think two or three enemies with like a, with like one brick or one glass bottle. Like I, I I can't even fathom that, dude. 
See that one, I when I looked at it, I was like, oh man, but I looked it up online and there was a couple uh, specific spots where there were actually guys lined up ready for you. You just yeah. had to time it right. That They had the guys that would be patrolling yeah. back and forth. Yeah. So you just had to be there at the right time, open the door right at the right second. That one probably took me about an hour though because yeah. it was more or less just get lucky with the brick throw. That, that how, how, do you, how do you deal with the, the the weariness that comes about through repetition? Like, how, how do you how do you get around that desire to rage quit? I just I'll switch games for an hour or two. That's how I do it. Just to kind of cool off for a bit, right? Yeah, Dark Souls two this week a couple times. I I literally yeah. just wanted to throw the game out the door, but <laughs> I uh, you yeah. know you take a deep breath and you just come back to it an hour later. You just got to kind of like. You gotta kind of like distance yourself and then come back and go okay yeah. let's get back into it there were, i was trying to do a boss the other night and i was doing one of the trophies where you have to there's npcs you can summon for certain boss fights and one of the trophies is uh this one npc has to survive three boss fights with you and wow. like the boss fight i'm doing i'm doing it on new game plus and it's it's just atrocious like you get into the room and the NPC just literally just gets smacked around so fast before he can even start really working on the boss. I I think I spent about two or three hours on that one, and I, I got really frustrated with it and had to turn it off. But like I, w I went back to it today and I did it like I think the second try. That's uh, what so it is, good. man. It's it's really just you need that break, that mental break. Yeah. That's what happened, like you know, on a smaller degree when I was when I had that time with the final boss of Metal Gear Rising. And oh God. I had three, oh God. four hours <laughs> just crazy, to like, beat my head against the wall. And then the next day, you know, I, I think in an hour I whooped his ass because just, you just need that mental space. So it's, it's not about giving up. I mean, it, but, you know, that, that's, that's the thing, man. Something about, you know, people might say, okay, oh, wow, 200 hours of Dark Souls 2. I don't know if I could ever handle that. That's crazy. But I think there's part of, like, a zen to it. Like, I mean, you just get... It's just such a great journey. Again, if, if you have a game that's so well designed, that's so willing to be discovered, I don't think you really notice the time passing. I think you, it's just it's just the completionist in you kind of comes out. And did uh, I totally agree? And Dark Souls, like I, I ended up buying the collector's edition for it too, and I spent one hundred and twenty dollars. And usually for a collector's edition, you know that's kind of absurd, but. Even if it didn't come with as cool of a statue as it did, I can still totally justify that $120 because I've put, I've definitely gotten my money out of it, you know? You definitely got your money's worth out on that one. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I want to kind of go back to the, what we were talking about with the community. Now, you know, this isn't still a, like really a mainstream thing yet. Like, let, let's tell, like for people who don't really know that there even is community for trophy hunters, Tell us a little bit about like how you get started, what the community's like, you know, is it competitive? Like, just describe it a little bit for us. Uh, well, from my personal experience, I haven't really had any negative uh, experiences with the community that I've been exposed to. Uh, like I said, I've been I use ps3trophies.org, and uh, all the people on the forums on there, they're extremely helpful. I I haven't talked to anyone who you know has given me a bad taste in my mouth, and. Uh, you need to be talking to these people too because a lot of these trophies, the multiplayer trophies, um, especially if you're playing an older game, you can't just hop online and try to do the trophy without going on the forums because you know you get an older game that no one plays anymore. You have to go on these forums, you have to get involved with these communities and you have to talk to these people and get them on your friends list, you know, and like you get someone on your friends list and they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, like I'll, I'll help you do those trophies for that game, maybe you can help me do trophies for that this game. Like I've, I've met people on these communities. I met a guy actually a couple weeks ago that um, we, we platinumed uh, Killzone Shadowfall together on PS4. And I ended up talking to him for a while in party chat. And he was just like, oh yeah, he's like, I'm trying to find someone to uh, do Dead Space 3 with me. And I was like, well man, I was like, I'll go buy Dead Space 3. I'll, I'll do that game with you. I ended up going through Dead Space with him. So it's just like a super awesome community. I. Uh, there's a lot of people on my friends list that I'm glad I met, and uh, there's probably a lot more people I will meet from being on that community. So you know, that, that that brings up an interesting thing uh, with uh, that I wasn't really aware of when it came to this to this trophy. I, I I knew that there was this kind of element of getting trophies and, and like I said, kind of having the bragging rights and be able to kind of show off your achievements a little bit. And um, but to, but to be also uh, you know to the fact that, that this is actually another avenue for it to, to actually meet other gamers. That's uh, very cool. I, I didn't actually realize that there was actually that big of a community around this. I think it's gotten to the point too where trophies are bigger than ever. Like uh, 
maybe back in 09 when I was doing trophies, they weren't, like, people were doing them, but I, I guarantee that the community has just tripled or quadrupled in size in the last five years. That's such a crazy new social activity that I never would have mm -hmm. thought of. The co-op trophy hunting. That's like, that, that's just it's, something, in, that's something super interesting to me. Like the, the, there's, that's a totally new social dynamic. It really mirrors when we used to sit together in front of an NES and say, okay, you know, you gotta go there in Castlevania and stuff, but it's, it's taken to like this broader uh, kind of cold achievement level where you, you both have the spoils of that journey there to show off. It's almost kind of another dimension of that virtual kind of co-op that we've always kind of hinted at. You know, it's, well, it's, fact, it's, it's like a whole other kind of dimension of that. It's, it's like playing with somebody on the couch, but, uh, but uh, not necessarily having to be in the same space. Well, the fact they added uh, party chat to the PS3 just makes it worlds easier now, too. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Before, yeah. you know, you'd have to maybe get in like a text chat on the PS3, you know, shoot a couple messages back and forth. Now it's just like, you know, hop in my party, let's talk, you know. Tell me what, what the name of the game is. I'll join right now. It's just a lot easier. Well, it's something I, w I, I wish we had the party chat on PS3. It's a shame that they never added it because it was really a pain to uh, do co-op trophies before. It's, 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 it's a pain having to, to manually type out on uh, the messages with uh, the, the controller, having, having to actually use the analog sticks to, to actually type yep. out a message. It, it's a pain to be able to I got to the point where I always had a keyboard plugged into my PS3 just uh, from, for talking to people. Exactly. Because I got sick of having to do all those messages on the controller. I, I think you're going to see this evolve, though. I mean, the PS4 chat system and Xbox One is they're, they're in their infancy. I mean, right? Like, I don't know much about the Xbox One, Xbox One party system. I'm sure it's much more advanced than the PS4's is, but the fact is, is that, yes, we can, like the Vita, we can finally cross-game chat. You know, we can, we can eventually start participating in each other's games. The fact that Diablo 3 is going to take this whole new kind of co-op uh, level to the next thing by streaming and being able to join in, uh, being able to do achievements together. I, I think we're seeing the evolution of this process, and I think it starts with what they've started doing with rarity. That's like the newest thing we've seen in trophy. So, what do you think about the whole rarity thing and where, where this is going, Blake? Oh, I like the rarity of having certain like trophies yeah. that are really rare. Uh, it's more or less just bragging rights, right? Like, I have a couple, I have a trophy that very few people have. I actually have yet to talk to anyone on the PS3 forums that's on my friends list that has it. I have uh, Doom 3 BFG Edition Platinum. And when people see that on uh, that I add to my list to do other games, they, like, it's the first thing they always say to me. They go, wow, you got Doom 3 Platinum? I'm like, yeah, it took me like months <laughs> on end, but I did it. Uh, that's <laughs> an impressive it, one, actually. Yeah, it was a tough one, but it yeah. uh, it's definitely like the rarity thing. It's all bragging rights, and it's just you know bragging rights among the community. Well, People, it's it almost gets you that level of respect though too on the forums, go. especially. It, yeah. I think it really shows if you're if you're just one of those person people who you know plays the game to the end, kind of randomly get stumbles across some trophies, you know, gets the 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 common ones that everybody gets, and you just kind of stop there. Like versus like when you see like an ultra rare, it's like wow, that guy really had to push. He's he's not kidding. Like, and I think what what it was, guys, is I think it was a reaction to the trophy system getting abused. Now we we talked a little bit about that before we started recording. Let's talk about the kind of the dark side uh, of this whole trophy phenomenon I, I feel that it because some companies have started to abuse this whole idea of of working hard and getting an achievement to show just so people can get achievements for the sake of achieving it's like this whole achievement oriented culture we're in now where where kids don't get you know they don't everybody gets a consolation prize now and that's what it feels like it was leaning towards in like the last couple of years do you guys agree at all Kind of, kind of like in school where we had the, like, kind of everybody gets a trophy day kind of a thing. Yeah, so it's like you take away competition. I, yeah. I think that, first of all, you know, games like Treen 2, mm. you know, everybody knows that you can platinum that game in 30 minutes. It has four trophies and you get a platinum for it. Walking Dead, all you got to do is finish the season. You get a platinum. Um, Hannah Montana, how many games, Hannah copies Montana. did that sell realistically because it's one of the notoriously easy Platinums. What do you, what do you think about that, Blake? As a, as a hardcore trophy hunter, does this piss you off or do you think they can coexist or do you think it kind of, do you, do you think it strengthens trophies or dilutes it? Well, I honestly think um, there was a lot of real freebies early on in the trophy, uh, in the trophy world when the PS3s, our PS3 games started uh, bringing trophies out. 
Um, I think that's kind of died off in the recent years. Like, yeah, you're going to get the you know, the Disney games that are really easy and, like, the Hannah Montanas and stuff. But, like, I don't think there's quite, a ma quite as many of those anymore. Like, I remember specifically, uh, what was it, the Terminator Salvation that came out. I remember reading that you could uh, platinum that one in about maybe a couple hours. And oh, all, it was, all it was was, uh, I think it was, like, what, like... 13 gold trophies and then one platinum and that's it I see. you'll never see that nowadays like that that's just a very very odd lineup of trophies to have in a game the standard now is you know like you get about 50 trophies in a ps3 game and it's going to be mostly uh bronze a few silvers maybe two or three golds and then the platinum but no i, I don't let the easy trophies bother me that's another thing too is like i i don't I don't platinum games because they're like super hard for bragging rights or like I don't platinum games because it's really easy and I want more trophies. The games I platinum are games I enjoy to play and it's just it's just an extension of that game life for me. It's like beating the game is one thing but platinuming it is just a whole other journey and it gives me more reason to put that game back into my system even after I've beaten it. Yeah, so get, you, my, you're a get my money's worth. Because you're a completionist, right? You need, you yeah, get that absolutely. Sa satisfaction of actually getting all that you could out of that particular game. Yep, absolutely. Especially, you know, when you're buying a $120 collector's edition. You want to get all you can get out of it, right? <laughs> I want to get as much as I can get out of it, absolutely. exactly. What do you think of the whole Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes controversy? You know, I think it seemed like Hideo Kojima was a little annoyed that he didn't get platinum status. Uh, do you guys think that game deserved a platinum? I would say Ground Zeroes because of the length of it. I mean, uh, that, that would. Uh, I think if there would have been a platinum, I think it would have been one of those ones where I think probably everybody could have gotten it, just because of, of how short it is. Fa fa uh, the full on game Phantom Pain. I mean, that that will definitely be uh, platinum worthy. But I just don't think that that game was had quite enough to it to kind of justify that. And I remember reading somewhere too, like I could be wrong, but they were they tried justifying that they they were like, oh, we're not gonna give you a platinum on this game because you know it's not like a full priced game, or they said something weird like that. But it's like you get a lot of fifteen dollar PSN games that have a platinum, you know, like yeah. I platinum to uh, what is it? Um, Strider. Uh, Strider, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was only a fifteen dollar game, and that was a short. It wasn't that long of a game. Wasn't super short either, but like if you roll through it at a pretty good pace, you could beat it in like maybe a few hours. Like it wasn't very long. I'm, I'm kind of sensing a criteria coming together here, and I think that that's largely with that game in particular because uh, with uh, with um, with uh, Metal Gear with uh, with uh, that one is this it, really is kind of like a prologue to, to the, what the full on game is going to be like. That's what really what Ground Zeroes is. is it, it's a prologue to Phantom Pain, right? So. Yep. I'm kind of glad I didn't pick it up. Like, I'm sure it's a fun game and it looks gorgeous, but uh, I don't know. I, when I saw that video of that guy beating it, what was it, in like 11 minutes? I was like, oh, I'm kind of glad I saved my uh, $35 on that one. Yeah, exactly. I, I was pretty underwhelmed by that game in particular. Yeah. Because you, you bought it, right? I did buy it, and uh, I, 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 it's one of those ones where it, uh, you know, just the, with the nature of some of those, especially with it being so short, with it being such a story driven thing I, th I think once you play through it once you know I, I think that's you know you kind of get that oh that's enough already you know, like it's not one that I think you're gonna continue to revisit you know whereas whereas uh, what the full-on game is gonna be I mean obviously that's gonna be a lot more open and there's gonna be a lot more to do and it's you're not gonna get the same out of it I think every each time you play it so you probably want to play through it once and then go through a second playthrough and just kind of discover more and kind of explore more, right? So. Yep. I, th I think it was designed just to give everybody a little taste of what's to come. It's it just a teaser. Been nice. It's it would have been nice if they charged, you know, maybe fifteen, twenty dollars, not thirty-four ninety-nine, which they exactly. want here in Canada. You can, you, you can get it for for cheaper on uh, on PSN. It's only okay. it, is, it, it is only twenty bucks on PSN, but for, but but for even even for that though, it still felt like it was maybe a little too much. Yeah. So asking just a little too much for it. Okay, yeah. so there there are people out there who would argue like that that say we want a platinum for every game that comes out. We want you know every game to have a platinum. Do you think every game deserves a platinum? I think you're. I think you're kind of saying. I, I, if we were to write the unofficial rules of what de defines getting a platinum, getting a full trophy set, it seems like you guys are kind of saying time factor. Is that is that probably the most important factor to you? Uh, you know, that, 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 that's tough to say. You no, know, I would agree with you that I, I think that you know every game should have it. But but it's 
you know, because it's largely based on, on kind of fully 100% completing the game. But I mean, it's, you know, I'll, I'll throw this over to you, to, to you, Tether. I think you could probably explain this a little bit better than I can. You know what? It's a tough. It's a tough one to take on because like there's certain games I have on my PS3 that don't have platinums, and I absolutely think they should. Like Mega Man 9 and 10, those aren't easy games. There's a trophy, and I think it's Mega Man 10 that you have to beat the game without getting hit. I think that's one of the trophies. And I'm sorry, but if you can do that in Mega Man 10, you <laughs> deserve a platinum trophy after that because that's no small feat. Yeah. That, that's but, something um, that comes up a lot, actually, you just mentioned. Re like, the idea of possibly tro games that went w either without a platinum or that went without a trophy altogether. I mean, how awesome would it be able to see the first Ratchet and Clank uh, for PS3 get repatched for trophies? Like, some of these older games. How I, I, I don't know. How, how Do you think that's a hard thing for these? Do you think it's a waste of their time to go back and do this kind of stuff? I personally don't think so. No, not at all. They... They did it for Metal Gear Solid 4, didn't they? That's true, they did. Now, yeah. do you think... Okay, so there was that rumor um, that uh, the PS2 and PS1 games might get patched one day. What, what do you think about that rumor? Do you think that's realistic? Yeah. Mm. What do you think, Joe? You know, it, it's just a... You know, that, that's, that's a tough question to, to answer. I mean, I just... Uh, is, you know, is there a real enough kind of a demand for it from gamers, right? You know... It, yeah, that's tough to say. I would definitely say. I mean, there are definitely a lot of hard games and a lot of really good games that I think people would like to see that. But you know, I, 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 think, I think that they're probably looking more forward instead of looking back. Yeah, and it's a lot of time that they would have to spend to probably do some of those games. But hey, like, if they want to make money, I'm sorry, but if they put you know a trophy set on a game like Final Fantasy VII on the on the store there. You're gonna see those like that. That's probably a really high-selling game for PS1 classics, anyway. I think they would see a sales boost just alone if they put trophies on that game, though. Yep. So so like, why not do it, right? With especially of having uh, like on the, the the PS4 now, with having uh, you know, hopefully most of those games available digitally. You know, I think they, they could just kind of since it's since they're coming to PS4 in, in that way that they could just kind of in, incorporate that trophy system into their with those as they port them over. I think in this whole HD reboot, I don't know, I wouldn't want to call it a renaissance. I'm wondering if it's more being shoveled in our face uh, to some extent. But all these games are getting remade now, like Tales of Symphonia and mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts. Final Fantasy, X Final, was Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X was the best out of them that I saw. Uh, Okami yeah. was really well done too. But, I mean, here's the thing. There is your excuse. I mean, you don't have to go back and repatch these old games. You, you pepper them up a little bit for the HD era and... And not only are you selling at a higher price than you would on for five bucks on the PSN, maybe 10, 30. It, it makes sense from a business perspective just to really quit put an HD gloss of paint and just put a proper tro trophy set on that. You know, and to, to get slightly off topic, I just want to touch on this. Uh, with you mentioned Final Fantasy X. There is a good example of a proper way to uh, <clears throat> to kind of reboot or to kind of uh, remaster one of these games. There, there's a, there's a perfect example of what should be done when it comes to that. That that game looks spectacular on PlayStation 3. It wasn't a slapdash, you know, scotch tape and paint job. Like, they actually, no. it looks good. You know, it does. whereas I would say Kingdom Hearts 1.5, it's it just really shows the age of the PS2 hardware. And I get it, but it, it doesn't seem like they spent as much time on it because I know they're working mm -hmm. on Kingdom Hearts 3. They wanted to put this out to get some hype back in the series. But, you know, you see, you got, that's the thing, you know, it's like now that, that's really going to, that's where the cream's going to rise to the top, that people are actually taking the time to properly work on these. Like, I know that, for instance, uh, Last of Us, which is getting redone for PS4, love it or hate it, at full price, they started working on this as soon as they finished the PS3 version. They've been working on this for a while, and it shows. You see that trailer, yep. it looks pretty damn awesome. So if you haven't played last of us yet because you were maybe an ardent 360 fanboy there's definitely something to look forward to but uh getting back to trophies um okay so we we know the state of trophies obviously it's evolving you know communities are getting bigger there's the rarity factor now to kind of distinguish the the tourists from the real trophy achievement hunters we keep saying trophies but really it's, it's achievements and trophies depending on the platform you're on um where would you like to see it go is there any improvements that can be done? There's always improvements. What would I would like to see, and uh, this is pretty ambitious, but uh, for, for me, what I'd like to see when it comes to trophies and achievements, 
is that I would like to see some, whether it's, um, you know, to, to see some kind of unification. You know, this is pretty ambitious, but what I'd like to see is some kind of unified trophy achievement thing where, where you can go on no matter what platform you're on. It just incorporates everything that you've collected, whether it's on PlayStation 3, whether it's on PS4, or Xbox One, or Steam, and have like a unified kind of trophy achievement kind of center. So where you can look at not, not only just your achievements on one platform, but to see the real kind of bigger picture. We're almost there. Uh, if you sign up for RAPTR.com, what you do is you plug in your Steam ID, your Xbox Live Arcade ID, your PSN ID, and then it does actually, well, for the most part, it tracks your hours, your achievements, mm -hmm. your standing in the Raptor community for whether you're elite on a game or dedicated, but yeah, you can switch platforms and join communities based on each of the games. It tracks your account every day, so it's, it's constantly refreshing everything you've done so you can see it, like you're saying, Joe, in like a large scope, but it's still a new thing. I mean, there's really only an iOS app for it. There's nothing for Android yet I, I most people still don't know about it yet but I see more and more people getting invested in this community my only yeah. problem with it that yet is that Sony's been a little late to truly integrate into them because they still don't track your hours on Sony they'll track your yeah. trophies and you can and it's cool because you can actually manage your friends list and send them messages from the Raptor desktop so I've actually cool. got a chat list that breaks it down into my Steam list underneath is my PSN list and if I had an Xbox Live account I'd have that list and I can just click on each and send mail so I, it's kind of like this command center and I, and I think that's that's really I don't see anything else like it I think that's like the one of its kind um, Blake where would you like to see trophies go like what enhancements could we see where you want to see community go what, what do you want to see for the future um I, for the most part I like where trophies are at right now like I think it's a growing community people are getting more into getting them um, other things they could do, you know, it would be nice to see like some sort of leaderboard or something, especially with the PS4 and how they're, you know, they they have all these plans to add all kinds of new stuff. I, I don't think there's any harm in putting some sort of ranking system or leaderboard on like, I know they have a, a like how many people have platinum a, uh, platinum the game or gotten certain trophies now where you go into the trophies and it says the percentage of people that have uh, gotten them. But uh, I think they could add more with that. Like even maybe may just add like an actual number now, like how many achievers have this trophy or stuff like that. But I don't know. For the most part, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty adamant about it. It's uh, I don't know. I like it. You know, something really. Something that I would like to see is kind of similar to uh, you know, like on um, in Zen Pinball when you get to, when you get close to uh, say beating somebody else's high score. Yeah, like uh, you're two trophies away from. Uh, from that, that's somewhere something where it, it kind of gives you a, a heads up and says, "Okay, you're 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 about this far away from matching somebody else's achievement." That I, would be cool. I and I also like another. I like that. I also like another idea. I think you kind of almost brought up there, Blake, was that the idea of a leaderboard? Like that would be kind of mm -hmm. cool. Not only just to see a side by side view with a particular friend you're comparing trophies with, but actually see like either your whole friends list, like who's the top for gold trophies, or who has the most, who is the highest percentage, highest level, like in like a snapshot. You know, and then compare that globally, compare that regionally, you know, that then make it more competitive that way. And I think they really need to start investing in community options within these networks themselves instead of just relying on external websites like ps3trophies.org actually have something integrated inside PSN. And I think as the as the chat rooms and as the social features evolve, I think we might see more of that. Maybe even integrate that into PlayStation Home or something, like some yeah. kind of um, Hall of Champions or something. Because this could almost turn into something that we could use for Joystick Justice League, is we could have you and me, Mike, we could have Tether, we could have Koma and some of our other, other friends. And we could almost have something set up, like at, let's say, uh, like at the end of one of our shows, that we could show, okay, you know, this is how many trophies and achievement Mike has, this is how many Joe has, this is how many Tethered has. And we can, and then that way we can almost kind of keep track and we can have like a pecking order. Okay, you know, uh, you know, Tethered's got this many, this got, I mean, we can almost keep track of like a leaderboard and say, you know, boom, you know. In a sense, cool. it, it's starting to happen though. And, and Tethered, you, you brought this, to, like you made a point of this one time when we were talking, when we were first getting used to the, our PS4s and the new thing. Remember the what, you, uh, you you mentioned the what's new page and how much you like about that. And it kind of relates to what Joe was talking oh, about. Yeah. What is it about it's with that, that what's new page? What's cool about that? I just like the fact I can go on there and I, I like on my PS4, I check it out all the time. You're talking about the one that uh, shows the who's gotten like certain trophies and what like new games to come out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really enjoy it because you know I can see where certain people like where they're at in the game. 
Um, I, I just like the fact I can see people. It's like, oh, okay, that guy platinum that game. Nice, cool, you know, like stuff like that. People see that, you know, oh, he finished Killzone Shadowfall. That must have taken him or, forever. Or he rated four stars on the store on, on Killzone. He rated it four stars. You can do that now on the store. You can rate it by stars. It'll show, okay, Tethered rated this three stars. Oh, Tethered likes this game. Or 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 Joe is streaming now on Twitch and stuff, and you can click right from in what's new. I, I think Xbox probably does something similar, but it, it's, it's just really nice and elegant the way they've done that. It's really easy. It's like a daily bulletin board, really. Yeah, very streamlined. I like it. Yeah, it's nice, and I think that's it. It just—it's just, it, it, just the fact that if they keep evolving that system, I think it's going to really break, make it that ecosystem that they're looking for. Okay. Yeah, to, to, to yeah. almost see like, well, like, like, like let, let's see if uh, you know if Tyler were to. Uh, Finish plumbing Dark uh, Souls 2 tonight. Have it come up where, where it's like a little notification. Congratulations. T t tether just platinum, blah, 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 this game. That's right. That, like that'd an be online, cool too. You're talking about like an online notification? Exactly. Well, that'd and, be cool. and it's cool that'd because be cool. you can like those statuses too. And then just like yep. Facebook or social networking works, then it. You, you, I like your status. It gets on to other people's daily bulletin board as well. So really, exactly. just again, creating that, that community that was in its infancy in the seventh generation, which is, I think, now kind of going head to head with Xbox Live. I think Xbox Live was kind of like up here and PSN was down here. I don't think people can really make that argument anymore. I think it's kind of caught up. Yep. All right, so let's, like, oh, sorry, you were gonna say something, Blake? Oh, go ahead. No, go you ahead. go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say that um, a lot of people like to argue that, oh, PS3, you know, stole the whole trophy idea from uh, Microsoft, but you know what, even if they did steal it, I'm cool with that. Like, I'm glad they brought it over because, uh, like I said, it just gives me more to play for. And I, I kind of like the idea of trophies instead of achievements too, because like the, I, I hunted so many achievements on uh, Xbox, and the thing I didn't like about the achievement system on there was you could go on someone's list or on someone's profile, and you could see, okay, wow, he has like 60,000, 70,000 achievement points. But for all you know, he's just played a ton of games, you know, and he's been writing a new game every weekend. The fact yeah. you can go on the PS3, a PS4, and you can go on someone's profile, and you can say, you can, say uh, you can look at it and be like, okay, he has 3,000 trophies, but you know what, he has, well, he also has 45 platinum, so he doesn't just play games, he completes games. And that's the go. thing I think that they may have stolen the idea from Microsoft, but I think, um, they I think PlayStation, it. they refined it, and it's just a lot better. I think the trophy system works. Uh, it, it's just a nicer system, I feel. Yeah, you know, and that, that's funny. It kind of brings something else to mind of what I, I would like to see more of. And this kind of happened at the PS4 launch, and it's happened at times through a, a Xbox Live's history, too, and with Steam, to an extent, where you can spend your reputation points. And I want to see more of that come through, because that happened at PS4 launch, where if you had so many golds or platinums that were worth a currency, that you could trade for in-game DLC. And I think that's got to be a standard. I, th I don't think that should yeah. be, like, Christmas at, a, at, like, a launch. I think that should be just, you, you earn... Like in-game currency, I think that would. I, I think that would be amazing. I believe they did a um, some sort of event not not too long ago. I think it was just like um, maybe at the end of last year, where it was a auction, and you could get certain uh, props from like the PlayStation uh, commercials and stuff. Like I think they were selling like the Assassin's Creed uh, uniform from the PlayStation 4 uh, promo ad. Um, the uh, kill zone suit, I think it was stuff like that, and I think you bought the stuff with gold trophies. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was gold trophies. That'd and be pretty. I, that'd be pretty cool. I would like to see what some de developers to do with uh, with uh, people who have platinum uh, games to have something like when they release their next game, have it be almost like kind of like a reward for players that have platinum their their, their previous games and offer them like like a uh, extended uh, DLC or. Or uh, extra characters, or skins, or whatnot, or, or maybe going a little too far to maybe get like a discount for their next game, but to but to at least kind of reward their gamers for platinum their games. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's any harm in it, you know. No. And that may be part of the reason with the whole rarity thing, adding adding a numerical value to PlayStation trophies, and because that's what made me think of the idea, Tether, when you reminded me of achievement points. It's like you it's a, you have 70,000 achievement points. That feels like you have like 70,000 in-game dollars to me. That's that's what that feels like that represents. And when you have like a point 
1% rare, ultra rare trophy on PSN, that can more easily be converted numerically into something that, that's tangible in like Elder Scrolls Online, for instance, or, yeah. or EverQuest Next. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what? I think that would make the idea of microtransactions more fair and less shady. Yes. Forcing pe not forcing ev okay the pikers who want to speed through the game and not work for it yeah they can get their fucking visa out but the people mm. who actually love that game and like and who want to put the 200 hours into it fuck man why can't you just uh you know get rewarded accordingly for that for that loyalty I've never been a huge fan of microtransaction games uh the last one I played was I think Warframe on the PS4. And honestly, like I, it was a good game. Like I, I enjoyed it without having to spend a dime. And uh, I just, I've never, I actually have never even spent money on a microtransaction in a game. Like I, I've bought add-ons and stuff, but like actually buying, like that, I'm talking about DLC. You know, I've never actually sat there in a game and said, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna buy this weapon instead of playing for maybe 10, 15 hours and just getting the weapon naturally. And this is a particular thing that we see a lot on the, on the mobile games. I mean, I think the two biggest. Uh, Culprits of this are obviously Candy Crush, and uh, another one is uh, the The Simpsons Tapped Out. Those, those, those are two ones that, uh, that that can be fully played and enjoyed if you put the time in. And you won't, won't have to spend any extra real world money, but there are, are Candy Crush in particular. People spend a ton of money so that they, they can get way up there, and then they say, "Oh, I've gotten this far in, so far in Candy Crush." Well, because but Candy it's be, Crush, but it's because it's 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 it almost to me it feels kind of like a version of cheating. Well, because be Candy Crush you. represents this this shitty new phenomenon of pay to wait, where yeah. it's like you can't play for like say twenty minutes unless mm -hmm. you put a couple quarters in or something like that. It, there was this yeah. game that's like crazy market on the Vita, which is like that. You can you can pay to pay to play or, or wait a day, and 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 that's why these games make so much money because these people don't mm -hmm. think about it logically. They're like, oh, that's fifty cents. I'll just press to, the button and then they get their internet bill and it's something else. You go else. into the uh, iOS uh, app store and you look at the uh, at the top growth. Like I'm not talking the top free. You go into the top grossing. Uh, not not just games, but top grossing apps on the iOS App Store and Candy Crush is right there at the top. I think it blows everything else out of the water. And it's a free game, but people are just they're just hemorrhaging fucking money out into this game. That's the myth. I'm gonna tell you something that contradicts that. And it was a, it was an article I read. I think it was on Kotaku this week, actually talking mm -hmm. about the reality uh, of the micro tracks <laughs> Prince Jackson industry. And it really is like one percent of the games that are making any money whatsoever. Mm. They actually said that the average I think it's like something like one or two percent of the games that are free to play actually make any money. They said that most of the, these games are played for an average of 20 minutes and they are never played again. So this whole wow. reality that you can get in there with this free to play model and just make a killing, it's a myth. It's Candy Crush and a couple of others that are making it all and they're not even making that much. It's, it's really just a very small percent of people who are actually contributing. And I think that really shows you what kind of shape a company's in when Capcom has to put out deep down free to play because they are in the tank right now man they can't really afford to put to that out that. for, for I was really big... surprised to hear that that was going to come out free to play I, I was, yeah, uh, that too. was a little shocking to me yep it was shocking I yeah, remember that, watching I mean, the first trailer and being like wow I can't wait to get that yeah. Yeah, and then that, when I heard it was free to play it almost kind of changed my it almost just changed the way I felt about the game I was just like oh. it's almost it the, like uh, maybe, that, maybe it's the, not that good yeah. It was the it was the second most shocking thing, right behind Facebook buying Oculus. You know that, that, that was like number two for me. You're like here, that that game went free to play. I, I was very very surprised. Unfortunately, yeah. I wasn't knowing what kind of condition they were. Like less than a, what hundred million in the bank. But is it is it a worthwhile thing to do? That's what I'm wondering. Like like if, if it's something that they're kind of just desperately kind of going after, I, I just don't see it as being a, a wise move. Do you, what do you think, Blake? I think the game's well, going to suffer. I, I got to be careful about what I say about free-to-play games because, to be honest, I'm really looking forward to Planet Side 2 coming to the PS3 mm -hmm. or PS4, and I, I own it on, or I don't own it, but I downloaded it for free on the, my computer, and I got to admit, it's a great game. And I think a lot of people are going to have fun with that game without spending a dime. Okay, so it's not one of those games where the guy with the biggest wallet wins the game? It, it can be early on, but you know what? You can have a lot of fun in Planet Side 2 without spending any money. And you can, you know, you can have a really awesome character if you play the game a lot. 
Um, you can speed the whole process up if you want to spend the money, but I think p most people are just going to download the game and they're just going to play it. So you know, one question I'm going to ask is that you know it's always kind of puzzling me of why these uh, like I can understand why mobile uh, game developers can t can go free to play with some of these bigger games like Bound by Flame. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to to justify in my own mind of, of what the reasoning is for going with that angle. Not Bound by Flame. I think you mean Deep Down, right? Bound by Flame is retail. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Bound by uh, Deep Down. I mean, yeah. I'm 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 just I'm, I'm trying to, to really kind of justify it. Really, that I think it really comes down to it's such a it's such a new system. I, I think it's it, but now the stats are coming out, the realities are coming out. I think people again think that it's a, it's an easy way to to get their product out there. But I, I think like what you're saying, Blake, it, it, it now seeing all of the the mediocre stuff that it really is free to play and the fact that they're really it's this whole idea that they're greedy maybe they're not but it just seems like that especially when peter mullen is speaking out against it you know and everybody's speaking out against it it, it really does feel like a cash grab I, I think that making trophies into currency to compete with the people with the big wallets the people who don't want to spend money but want to put time into it and get rewarded with in-game objectives that turn into those purchable purchable items I think that would actually possibly balance out the free-to-play system. Yeah, it, it could. You know, and uh, well, like I'm saying, but like just see, just like financially wise, you know, it stuff that it kind of baffles me, like the the, the reason for for going to free-to-play, because you just got to think of it from a financial standpoint for them. Like, how are they gonna? I think it's because they want to build the game as they go, Joe. But but still, where's the you know just thinking kind of greedily wise on the hand of the developer? How how are they going to actually benefit financially to, to to maybe to like put out their next game? They're they're, they're, they're trying to use the Walking Dead telltale model of going episodic and getting people to commit mm -hmm. to buying. Patches. I think it's an extremely risky move announcing I, that your game is going to be free to play opposed I think to saying so. it's sixty dollars. Yeah, I think it's a big risk on some of their behalf. These developers. Yep. I would agree. I would agree. So that's kind of like getting it back to trophies to really wrap this up. I, I want to kind of go into like just a general thing. Okay, fine. We've gotten to the nuts and bolts of the culture, but really, at the end of the day, for for people who maybe are new to to the the scene or don't really under, still understand why why people like you tether do what you do like people you i'm sure maybe somebody at some point has probably said oh why do you spend 100 hours on one game why do you do it like in the big picture why do you do this I, I honestly i feel a real sense of accomplishment when i platinum a game like you know dark souls or doom 3 bfg i just you know i could sit back and go you know what that game's totally finished i'm gonna shelf it never play it again um opposed to you know maybe just beating the game and <laughs> but leaving certain trophies you know hanging that i never finished but I don't know, like, I uh, I totally encourage p people to get into it, you know, like, I, people shouldn't uh, hesitate to, you know, talk, get on the community, get on the forums, you know, if, you, if you're starting to get into trophies, um, you know, don't, don't uh, have a second thought about it, get on the forums, talk to people, they're really helpful, um, and if it's the kind of thing that you're starting to get into, you know, it's good, it's it's a fun thing. I enjoy it quite a bit, and I think a lot of other people do too. It's it's uh, they're just taking the, the real love of playing games and just kind of kicking it up a notch. You know, yeah, that, 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 exactly. That's, that's the the way I kind of see it. You know, it's it just uh, you know, I think most people will, will kind of just play through and maybe only get like a fifty or sixty percent kind of completion level. I and mean, you can still kind of technically, you know, if like a story driven game like Uncharted, you can complete the story and whatnot, but not fully complete it but uh, it, it, to, to me it just, it's just it's taking that, that love of that but it just boom kicking up to that, that next level of, of just really completing I, I feel like it's almost like um, it's almost like adding an additional difficulty to the game Absolutely. it's like okay you beat the game on hard now get all these extra trophies you never got Exactly. And, yeah. and you know what? It's funny because, again, you mentioned the community. I think that's one of the biggest parts of it. I think it's one thing to see that bling go off and, and get that trophy and look at it. But it's, kind, it's but it's, yeah, I love <laughs> it too. I think I wish I had a ringtone for it. But uh, it, it's kind of <laughs> like those those collectibles you buy. It's, it, it's it, I think part of, at least for me, is that you know that maybe someday you'll show it to somebody and mm -hmm. there will be that sense of like, mm, you know, like recognition, like that that's awesome. Like he actually did that. Like, uh, do you think the part of that play, uh, some of that plays into that, that that yeah. that 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 need for recognition, maybe? Oh, absolutely, it does for sure. Would you say the community is competitive? Um, it can be. Yeah, I, there's a lot of people on there that when a game comes out, there's a big race to see who can platinum it first. 
and uh, a lot of the time you know you'll have one or two of the developers up on the list there and then the rest are just uh, these people that are out there getting it at midnight and they get home and they platinum it as quickly as possible but those people are also the people that have over 100 150 platinums they're the hardcores I I'm definitely a trophy hunter I wouldn't consider myself super super hardcore though like 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 I said, some of these guys on my list just dwarf my trophy collection. <laughs> well, you seem to pick right. and choose games. Like you don't, you don't seem to be the kind of guy who will like platinum something you don't like. You need no, to, exactly. you have to have that affection for that that relationship with the game in the first place. Yeah, I, I have very few games on my list that I have platinumed that are walks in the park. I think I maybe have one or like you know Ratchet Clank and um, Devil May Cry Three. <laughs> Which you were describing no, as a true no, bitch. No, no, we'll be doing that one. For oh, a you while, haven't finished but... that one yet. <laughs> but even even the even the ones I did recently, like they weren't incredibly difficult, but they were a challenge. Like I did Devil May Cry uh, or DMC, the new one, and you know it wasn't a super difficult platinum. It definitely took time though. You know I had to do the playthrough where you have one bar of health. You know if you get hit once, that's it. That <laughs> took that took wow. a little. It was a little frustrating. Uh, the okay. last boss fight against Virgil uh, that took me a good few hours because it's it's a it's a tough fight and you got to sit there you got to learn the whole um, the whole pattern of the fight and you know you have to get it down that was really tough and then I even went back to um, the original like I'm I've been trying to do the original Devil May Cry games and uh, like they're they're not easy either like they're not super difficult platinums but they're not a platinum you're gonna sit there and you're gonna do you know in maybe a week. It's going to take you a few weeks unless you're sitting there and like doing nothing but playing all day. You know, and I have I have things to do, you know, yeah. I can't be sitting <laughs> there can't, and playing it all day. But, we can't, we can't just like, just, you know, just strap on a fucking adult diaper and just sit there and play until we yeah. fucking platinum it, right? And, and you know what, if, if I could do that, <laughs> just forget I everything else, have... I'm just going to sit here on my own shit <laughs> until I, feel I can finish this game, right? I, oh, I'd, I'd easily have over 100 <laughs> platinums if that's what I did, you know, but I just... I casually get on at night, right? Like, I try to stream every night, and uh, that's the other thing, too. I love the fact that I recently got a capture card, and I've been streaming on Twitch, because now people can see me going through this process. I've been yeah. I've been streaming the entire Demon or Dark Souls 2 process, and I love the fact that I have my friends in there, and they're watching me. You know, they're making fun of me. It's like, you'll never plot <laughs> this. It's like... But yeah, it's good times, definitely. Yeah, so, uh, so you are on Twitch. Uh, yeah. Remind everybody about your uh, Twitch name. Oh, so I'm at uh, twitch.tv uh, slash tethered. That's T-E-A-T-H-E-R-D. Uh, I stream pretty much on a nightly basis, or at least try to. And like I said before, I've just been uh, streaming a lot of PS3 lately. Uh, trying to wrap up uh, Dark Souls 2, and then probably going to move on to something else. Not too sure what my next project will be, but it's uh, I got a couple on my shelf that need platinuming, so it'll be something. And I would say, yeah, I mean, if, if you, if you, it, it's, it's, it's a really great way to just get better at games yourself just to watch somebody else really go through the gauntlet of trying to complete every aspect of a game. So it's really, it's, it, it's really entertaining viewing to actually see somebody go after trophies on yeah, something absolutely. like that. And especially a game like Dark Souls 2, you know, you can beat Dark Souls 2, but it's like platinuming a game like that is just a whole other journey. It almost just changes the way you have to play the game especially for certain trophies. So, yeah, definitely. Joey, you got any last thoughts on trophy hunting from what you've heard from from somebody who's really invested in it? Yeah, it's definitely got me more interested to kind of search for because I, I will say that I, I've been uh, kind of guilty of, uh, if you know... Uh, uh, like completing the main part of a game, but not really kind of delving into like it getting really deep to actually. Well, to I don't actually think everybody. I don't think it's items. something everybody needs to do. I think it, it's just something yeah. like if you. Re I think it's but something now, that naturally will come. You know, if you want to platinum a game, I don't think you have to yeah. tr force yourself. But, but see, for me now, now it almost brings like a competition kind of aspect. Where, you know, well, so and so platinum. You know, I want to match that uh, that achievement, right? You've got many hours to go, my friend, to catch up to this other I know. guy over here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's it's definitely it, it's definitely such a new, exciting thing in video game history. This is it for me. When when we when we remember like the seventh generation of gaming, this is going to be one of the main things I remember about it, like the birth of the reputation system, which I I think is just going to continue to evolve. Again, as they as they really you know sculpt down those that Xbox Live and that PSN and Steam, uh, and, and, and just kind of even Steam as, as a side here. I mean, it, they've even taken another level with the whole badges and the whole trading of badges. 
that's even something I would like to see come to the consoles, you know, this idea of being able to trade kind of stuff too. Um, but yeah, something that that's, it's definitely in VMC, a lot more to talk about it. Been great having our special guest on today, Blake Tethered. Again, you can see him on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, you can also see Joe and I on twitch.tv forward slash 24 bit heroes. Uh, hopefully we're gonna get Joe up and streaming soon enough too. So we'll be kind of alternating as hosts. Um, and just keep subscribing to us on YouTube. Check out our other shows like Rage Quitters and Joystick Justice Sleep Battle Ar Arena, our breaking news segments. Um, support indie games. Anything else you guys want to say before we wrap up? Uh, our, our most uh, latest episode, I want to particularly uh, mention it, where we talk about uh, Mike and I talk about uh, our, the history of, uh, of our uh, network uh, from uh, from day one up until up until now. A very cool, very personal conversation about uh, our experience, everything so far. So make sure and check that one out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks for tuning in today, guys. We'll see you again soon. I'd like to th thank again our special guest, Blake Tethered. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. Game on, Blake guys. Tethered. And peace. Game on. Game on, guys.